And good afternoon, hello, and welcome to the Omni Coalition News Show, aka Talkness. Uh, I lost my script. Okay, uh, the Omni Coalition News Show is a dive into the weird, obscure, bizarre, and other words for strange world of notable events, weather, and sports, covering topics seldomly, if ever, seen from most news sources these days. Join us during a time of political overabundance and divisiveness. We present you with more unifying topics to discuss, for the most part. For links to the articles, the music, and anything else potentially interesting, check the under by the description below. Anyway, I am Aosander. And I'm MTM. And you, viewer, are you? Today is Tuesday, a.k.a. Tuesday, uh, August 1st, 2023. We are in August now. Here comes the heat. Yes. So, yes. Mr. Yes. MTM, yes. you found uh, a couple articles here, and let's uh, go through these. So, what do we got? So, this one was pretty interesting. So as, as you know, in uh, Supreme Court rulings, we're in a, in a court ruling, someone else can't be charged with something that someone else uh, uh, has had a ruling over, right? So if a judge rules something, someone else can't be uh, charged with that same thing. Yeah, it's a closed case. It's a closed case, right. So this was really interesting. This happened recently. Uh, judge rules that Trump false election claims while in office were actually covered by presidential immunity. So if you hmm. scroll down here, you'll see that a Pennsylvania judge stayed, uh, ruled Monday that an election worker cannot sue former President Trump over statements that Trump, he made, sowing doubt in the 2020 election results while in office, finding the statements are protected by what's called presidential immunity. The Philadelphia County Court of Common Pleas judge, Michael Erdos, said that Trump's immunity covered a tweet he issued and the comments he made remotely from the White House during a Pennsylvania Senate committee hearing in November 2020. The statements made without evidence claimed fraud in Pennsylvania's election tabulations. Huh. Right, well, so. When we start talking legality and politics, and that's way above my pay grade, it really hurts my brain trying to comprehend all this, <laughs> but like, <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, wow, so, like, because I don't follow this crap. Because that's where it's all just a, a, a kangaroo court. It's crap. Like, but so they they try to go after him for what he said in a tweet, and yes. he's covered by presidential immunity fr from that. But right. at the same time, why would they be going after him for a tweet? You know, like it it it's it is off. Like I mean, you know, like it's obvious to everybody. Like it's it's such a like a, a schoolyard like swing. You know. Oh yeah. Like, you know, it's it's such a what's what's the word like petty, like right, right. Yeah, I just think it's rather interesting. The election worker uh, is obviously like totally biased in in doing that anyway, in uh, trying to sue Trump. Right, he's he's uh, biased to make himself make themselves look good by well trying to sue former president because. He wants to make sure the ROV, you know, doesn't uh, look like they fraud the election. You know, I'm so tired of this crap. Yeah. Like, they're going around saying, you know, oh, saying, let's go, Brandon, is a danger to our democracy. It's going to... Yeah. Why am I saying that in Trump's voice? Like, uh, like uh, it's, it's going to tear the country apart. Meanwhile, what's her face? Like, the, the quote-unquote comedian is on the cover of Time holding, obviously fake, but a decapitated head of Trump. That's okay. Like... Yeah. What? Like I'm, I'm just tired of this, this immature, you know, first grader, kindergarten, preschool mentality in these fifty-year-old people. Grow up. Yeah. Like this is just pathetic. Most election workers are over fifty years old. I can attest as someone who's worked multiple elections. <laughs> <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Let's. But yeah, he's he's protected now. Yeah. Anyway. All right. What else do we got here? Oh, this is in uh, this is in my neck of the woods. Uh, dead body found in barrel at Malibu Beach. Whoa! And I uh, I went ahead and read a little bit of this earlier. Um, really interesting. A uh, homicide investigation was in progress after a man's body was found inside a container at a Malibu Beach in Los Angeles County in Monday or on Monday, so yesterday. Yeah. Uh, L.A. County Sheriff's deputies responded to a report of a dead body found inside a 55-gallon drum on the beach at Malibu Lagoon State Beach uh, on Monday morning. Jesse! That's not how Jesse, you dispose of the you body! Forgot to, you forgot to use the hydrochloric acid, Jesse. 
fucking god. <laughs> but all jokes aside, the man is dead. Like, you know, this is yes. uh yeah. Uh, a lifeguard saw the barrel floating in the lagoon around at 10 a.m. local time, according to the sheriff's department. The lifeguard then got the barrel and opened it, finding the body inside. Uh, they said that it was a person, a uh, black adult male who was unclothed. Paramedics proclaimed him dead at the scene. Um, authorities uh, were waiting uh, for the coroner to identify the body, which will be processed at the beach, the sheriff's department said Monday morning. It was unclear how long the container and the body had been in the water. No cause of death was immediately determined about... But a homicide invest investigation was in progress. So, I wonder if it was um, like Mexican mafia or something. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Or, or maybe it was someone who went over Niagara Falls and got way off course. Yeah, yeah. way, way, way yeah. off course. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, like this is uh, this is wild, and like, of course, Drake's. Sorry? Yes. Seems like something straight out of Breaking Bad, yeah. Yeah, no, oh, like, yeah, as no. I was reading this, like, I even made a joke, and I think you replied to it, right? Like, uh, with yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, like, it's just, like, it's just wild, but truth is stranger than fiction, as is said all the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe it is a cartel thing. Um, but, of course, uh, for links to this and, and all other articles uh, are found in the under by the description right now, uh, and please go give them a look. I'm pretty sure this is, like, derived from an, another longer story. This is pretty much a quick little snippet here. But let's move on up. What else do we got here? Oh, you want to take this one? Uh, Lab, sure. Lab-grown meat companies want a world of steak without slaughter. Hmm. Because they're going to have to raise the steaks. Oh, they don't want any boo. slaughter. <laughs> Purveyors of lab-grown meat who prefer the term cell cultivated to avoid the mad scientist with a test tube image. Foresee a world where our plates are full of steak, but animal slaughter is largely a thing of the past. I just Why want to say real quick, your joke yeah, was well done. Thank you. <laughs> Why it matters. Investors are pouring money into the sector and its promise of cruelty-free meals that are maybe better for the environment but many unknowns remain hmm. for now meat grown from animal cells is only available in the u.s in very limited quality or quantities at two high-end restaurants chicken is the first proof of concept product and while the taste is familiar the texture is a work in progress hmm. it remains to be seen if technology to grow meat at scale will produce economical or will prove economical and if consumers will welcome the results, yeah. I, I don't like this. Like, you know, a couple years ago, like I would have been all for this, but with how everything is going these days, like, I, I don't like this. It's just, it's just weird. Like we start, we start consuming things that's like you know, engineered, and, and also you know, granted, like everything in today's world is GMO engineered, like. Injected right. with God knows how many, you know, chemicals and whatnot, but, but I don't know. Like this is just, I don't know. I, I just don't like it. I just don't get have a good. Pardon me. I don't have a good feeling. I mean, about it, it, it has potential to, to create, um, massive quantities of, of food to feed people. But is the food really, um, fulfilling and healthy? Is is the question that we don't. And Understood. another thing that comes to mind is Soylent Green. Right, right, yeah. You know? Scary thought. There was a story uh, a couple years ago about using pig stem cells to create bacon and then feeding um, starving African villages with that. Huh. That was like the big talk. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Hmm. But we'll leave the viewer to... We'll leave the rest of this for the viewer, excuse me. To, yeah, to go and we that. have uh, another thing here. Like this is a little bit. Uh, oh. I kind of, I kind of went like newest to oldest with your link, so this was technically the first one you posted. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but we have a uh, lab-grown chicken. Uh, pardon me. Coming to restaurant tables and eventually stores. Hmm. Uh, the age of lab-grown chicken is taking flight. Ah, oh, but I'm bum. Uh, one of uh, Chef Jose Andreas' famed Washington D.C. restaurants, where diners will have the chance to. Uh, be some of the first people to taste what researchers have been working on for years. 
The chicken doesn't come from a bird, but instead is grown from chicken cells. Good meat, the California-based company supplying the lab-grown poultry, calls its cultivated chicken that good uh, good meat. Um, so, well, once again, I, I really don't, I, I don't like where this is going, especially if Californians are involved. I do not want any part of it. Yeah. I live here. I know where, you know, I know what our products are. I don't want them. <laughs> yeah. So, plus, you know, if we start going down all this stuff, the, yeah, like, we're, we're going to, we're going to eventually lose our cheese. Good cheese come from happy cows. Happy cows from, come from California. Like, yeah. If we start, if we if we get rid of that, we won't have good cheese anymore. Come on, you know, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, but, it's. I can see why they would want to do this. I mean, chicken is the most, uh, I think, economically friendly meat to produce because pe most people are willing to eat it. Like even despite like religious restrictions as well. Oh, chicken you know, is one the of the most versatile. Yeah, like. Um, it's it yeah, was that... very easy to domesticate. We've had it for thousands of years. They're small. They're easy to take care of, you know. Right. Uh, and they produce a good amount of food. Like, yeah, and they they produce uh, eggs qu quite fast as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah eggs. Yeah, yeah. You know, like they they are a machine. Like the only thing better yeah. than a chicken is a pig. Which, in the famous words of Jim Gaffigan, a pig can turn an apple, which is essentially garbage, into bacon. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah we know a lot of religions don't enjoy bacon and all that stuff you know pigs are dirty and all that whatnot which they are but but yeah no like chicken as you said like you know it, it is like uh i think the most popular meat uh, in the world actually, let me let me look that oh, up yeah. actually most popular meat in the world um might be cow actually but... um let's see here pork really huh. 36%. So according to the oh, United Nations Food 30, and Agriculture Only by 3% Organ though. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, outside of religious uh, requirements, uh, chicken. There we go. Yeah. But, Goat uh, and sheep, yeah, I can see why that would only be 5%. It's not. Yeah. But let's move on up here. What do we got from Oddity Central? The beautiful princess of strawberries costs up to $350 per piece? Whoa. Bijin Heem, aka Beautiful Princess, is a Japanese strawberry variety that is perfectly shaped and colored and offers an unmatched flavor. It also costs up to $350 a piece, making it one of the world's most expensive fruits. Wow. Developed by Mikio Okuda. Yeah. Mi Mikio Okuda. A Japanese farmer with over 45 years of experience growing strawberries, over 15 years of trial and error, Beijing Heem is one of the world's most highly regarded strawberry varieties. The largest fruits are about the size of a tennis ball and weigh about 100 grams. But it's not the size that makes the beautiful princess special. Well, actually it is. But not the way you expect. Generally, the larger strawberry is, the less flavor and the sweetness it has. But that is certainly not the case with the BG and Heat strawberries. They are rated at 13 degrees bricks, which makes them considerably sweeter than the 10 degree brick strawberry standard. And it has a flavor reminiscence of roses. I guess so Brees is a degree of sweetness. Oh. Like that is one beautiful looking strawberry. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The, the cotton certainly helps. Yeah. The texture of the BG and Him strawberries is said to strike a perfect balance between soft and firm, and the vibrant red color out of its shiny skin is said to permeate right down to its core. It also lacks any of the acidity and funky aftertaste that one usually gets from supermarket varieties. Dang. Oh yeah, that's really cool. I'd like to try this. Like, that's an expensive strawberry, but yeah. Japanese people figure out the best ways to make fruit, it seems like. Yeah, what they're watermelons, like, Japanese grapes. Were you part yeah. of the whole fruit conversation that Cyrus and the gang were having last night? And no. we all redeemed each other different fruits? Yeah, I'm a banana. Um, <laughs> uh, we renamed uh, Rhombuser to lime and Tittles to coconut. And it's because the lime and the coconut, you shake it all up. Uh, Rhombuser okay. wasn't too pleased with that this morning. <laughs> um... Uh, we made uh, Alice uh, some kind of melon or something, and 
Cyrus herself was some kind of peach, and Scott is a pumpkin pie. So. I could I could definitely see that for both of them, yeah. But yeah, had we known I'm, about this yesterday, like oh, like the beautiful princess strawberry, like I think I'm more of like a mango or an avocado myself. Oh, I renamed uh, Noah to tomato. <laughs> All right, move it on up here. Yep, we got uh, more from Audio Central. A man gets light bulb stuck in mouth while attempting stupid online challenge. Yeah, very stupid. Oh. I mean, like, you know, it is said, you know, and it is known, uh, a light bulb, you can put a light bulb in your mouth, but you cannot take it out. That's probably what he was doing, trying yeah. to take it out without shattering it, which you can't. Stuff so, like uh, this is kind of dog bites man story at this point. Yeah. <laughs> in our lifetime. Yeah. A Chinese man turned up at the emergency room of a Xinjiang hospital with a screw base of a light bulb sticking out of his mouth after trying one of the dumbest online challenges imaginable. Oh. I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, the hot coil challenge, the cinnamon challenge, you know, a lot of these challenges are pretty worse. Um, July 25th, firefighters at the Yuyao City Fire and Rescue Brigade in Zhejiang, China, were confronted with one of the most bizarre rescue cases yet. A local man referred to only as Mr. Chen burst into their station to try to explain something to them. However, the man's mouth was covered with a t-shirt instead of words. He only seemed able to utter muffled sounds. After removing the makeshift mask, the reason for this unusual speech became obvious. He had an LED light bulb stuck in his mouth and was trying to get help removing it. Unfortunately, that proved too difficult a task for the fireman. After inspecting the man's mouth and assessing the situation, the fireman decided that trying to yank out the glass light bulb was too difficult, as it could cause serious damage to the man's mouth if the glass burst. So they took Mr. Chen to the nearby Yayo People's Hospital, where a team of doctors uh, realized that the man could not open his mouth wide enough to safely remove the light bulb, so instead, they used a special mouth opener to dislocate his jaw on one side and remove the glass bulb. Ouch! Whoa. Uh, after blowing a sigh of relief, Chen told doctors that he had gotten the light bulb stuck in his mouth about two hours earlier. He had attempted to remove it himself, but couldn't open his mouth enough for the glass bulb to safely bypass his teeth. He had trouble swallowing and speaking, so he decided to seek professional help. Well, was, you know, when you get an idea, it's supposed to go above your head, not in it. All right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> come on. Ridiculous. It's almost as bad as that, uh, the, the many times people have a light bulb up their other end. Oh, like, man. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the only thing I've seen worse than this was, uh, I used to watch America's Funniest Videos with the family. And, uh, it was, it was generally regarded as, like, safe, you know, entertainment in the 90s. Yeah. But, like, once in a while you see something that's like, wow, I can't believe that they would put that on TV. <laughs> and my, my dad was pretty perturbed by this. This boy swallowed an LED light, like a red LED light, and his it was lighting up in his stomach. Oh God! And he, my dad was like, "I can't believe they let the they they actually showed that on TV." Yeah, that is child that endangerment. That could actually kill that kid. Yeah, that and, is child uh, endangerment. That is glorifying. Yeah, and, they, and they end up winning the prize. Well, of course, they end up winning the for the funniest video. That's and not funny at all. Like, That's terrifying. I can't. I can't. You like, turns it off. Yeah. Well, uh, let's move on up here. Oh, you get to talk about this one. Here we oh, go. Oh, boy. Fantastic. Couple sells eight-month-old baby to buy a new iPhone 14. Wow. Heartless couple in India was reportedly arrested for selling their eight-month-old baby to buy an iPhone 14 and make Instagram reels while traveling. Wow. Last week... Indian media reported the shocking case of a young couple from West Bengal who were so obsessed with Apple's newest handheld that they sold their toddler in order to buy one. Jay Dev and Sathi Ghosh started attracting the attention of their neighbors in North 24 Paraganas while they, or, excuse me, when they started traveling around the state and flashing their brand new iPhone 14. The couple had been known to earn a meager monthly income and had often struggled financially in the past. So, the drastic change didn't make any sense, especially since it had coincided with the mysterious disappearance of their eight-month-old son, something that Jay Dev and Sati didn't even, or didn't seem con all concerned with. Yikes. This is, that is heartbreaking. What? <sighs> You know, 
it is up to the people because I don't want to sit here and say, oh, we need a government law or something like we need we need licenses to have children. But clearly these people should not have the right to have children, but that should not be in the hands of the government. It should be hands in society and people need to start making lines in the sand, start having standards like they used to back in the day. And somebody in a community who sold their children for something like an iPhone or whatever, they should be shunned. Yeah, you know, like the they, they should obviously be stripped of their child because clearly they don't want it, um, and they should be not allowed to have children if not executed. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it's it's um, you know what they say. Or castrate them or something. Just easy to easy to make a baby, harder to make a father. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to kind of rhyme, but um, there's it's it's built into us biologically that it's easy to have sex and and get laid, but. There's no, uh, well, nobody has no any really responsibility good anymore. It's like not nobody like, parenting, yeah, isn't like a good thing that's like built into us either. Yeah, well, like you know, it used to. Aside be. from like a few things, but it used to be. But like you know, like things like this just really drive me up a wall. And like, in the very least, those two people, okay, they should be stripped of their phone, okay. They should be stripped yeah. of their rights. For, they for should starters. be, and they should be removed of their ability to produce any more children. Both of them, both of them. Like, this is just, this is disgusting. Like, let's let's go up. This is pissing me off. Let's go up to the next one here. It's disgusting. It's wrong. They shouldn't even allow it. Okay, folks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take, go ahead. Take moving on up to UPI. Japanese man suctions 11 cans to his head to break world record. Whoa. Huh. <laughs> wow. Talk about a tin man. A uh, Japanese man put his unusual skill to the test and reclaimed the Guinness World Record for most drink cans placed on the head using air suction. Uh, they really do have a record for everything. Uh, Sushini Kano, at the age of 31, initially broke the record back in 2009 when he managed to suction nine drink cans to his head, and his record was later broken by Jamie Canhead Keaton, who replaced the feet with ten cans. All right. Kano reclaimed the record by upping the ante to eleven cans. He said the trick to increasing his can total was learning to create air suction on his temples. Okay, how do you do that? <laughs> um, and yeah, so uh, the rest is mostly quotes. So, uh, so yeah, he he got it done. Got eleven cans. Well, like a can has like the I'm yeah, to water myself. Yeah, the little base thing. Part under, yeah, the little base. Yeah, which which is like an air pocket. You just um, push in far enough, the uh, air will pressurize. Yeah, in that, in that pocket. Interesting. Oh. What else do we have here? Oh, I know a couple alligator. Of people. Yeah, spotted swimming in the pens in a Pennsylvania river. That's pretty. Uh, That's pretty north of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wildlife officials and police in Pennsylvania are trying to locate an alligator spotted in the pen in the uh, swimming in the river. A group of kayakers on the Kiski uh River. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Between Avonmore and Apollo, snapped a photo Saturday when they spotted an approximately four-foot alligator nearby. Mm. It was on the shore, then it moved into the water, kayaker Mark Tannis told the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. We obviously don't see this on the Kiski. Police and Pennsylvania Game Commissioner are now attempting to locate the reptile. Amber Phillips, a humane officer with the Armstrong County, said anyone who spots the gator should immediately notify the authorities. All right, so but anybody in living in there, Pennsylvania... Uh, keep an eye out if you live near a river, you know, for an alligator, four foot. <laughs> it's really interesting. I... Stuff like that a few years ago. I, it was just a prank. I, I feel like this might just be a joke. Oh, hmm. no, it, it, it could, it could not be. Um, it's not even a bunch of, well, a bunch of like fishing towns in, um, in uh, Canada were they have photos of here, because guys. of overfishing. But because of climate change, the fish and like lobster all migrated uh, north to find colder weather because it's so hot in mainland, um, closer to yeah. the equator. So the fishing towns became active again and started back up. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, just oh, yeah. hearing about a, a gator here in, up in my own state. Wow, that's just that's odd. Yeah. I remember seeing something about that like six, seven years ago. It was just a, it was just a prank. They said they seen like a seven footer sitting in the Susquehanna down, like right down the road from uh, 
I think it was right down the river, downstream from where they uh, host the Little League World Series hmm. in uh, South Williamsport. Because that's where they host it. They host it there in Southside, as we call it. Yep. You want to take one, or oh, you still boy. at the gym getting the pomp on? Yeah, no, I just. Oh no, I got that a little bit ago. I didn't hear that last part. He I said he got home a little bit ago. Do you okay. want to take this article? Uh, I believe it is your turn, Mr. Uh, MTM. Oh, boy. California company turns recycled shower sink water into beer. Once again, oh. I, I reiterate my statement. If it's from California, I do not want it. Now that Anchor Steam's gone, everybody is trying to step up to the plate. Yeah, yeah. so is Bud Light, too. A uh, California company, Parallel. Uh, Parlayed. Or late, it's water, excuse me. It's water recycling expertise into the creation of a beer made from San Francisco residential buildings waste. Oh, this is going to be literal piss water. Like, literal piss water. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> Junky piss water. Ew! That's a clean tech. Ew! Ew! Yeah, ew! crackhead ew! junky ew! piss water. Epic Clean Tech, a San Francisco based water treatment company teamed with Devil's Canyon Brewing Company. How oh, fitting no. to create a Epic One Water Brew, a Kolsch style ale made using recycled <laughs> water from shower sinks and washing machines in 1550, oh, a 40 story luxury apartment building. That is hilarious. Oh Buildings my globally God. use fourteen percent of all oh, potable man. water. Aaron Tartovsky, CEO and co-founder of Epic Clean Tech, told CNN, "Almost no buildings reuse that water. That's what we're trying to change." The beer is not currently for sale due to regulations banning recycled wastewater from being used in commercial beverages, but it proved to be a big hit at a conference on sustainable building technologies and that uh, is this is just this is ridiculous like and now obviously now they're probably going to pass a law like legalizing this and like and then it's going to turn into a common practice and then and then every beer is going to be made from recycled water i don't like this no stop it don't do it like we don't need this disgusting absolutely disgusting you know what maybe it'll make me stop drinking beer though if anything that's a good. That's that'd be a, that'd be a good step, yeah. Yeah, but then uh, are they gonna be using recycled like uh, recycled grape juice from from school canteens, you know? Yeah. Like for to I make mean, wine, like this is outrageous. What else do we have here? More from UBI. Chief Uno player sought to make four thousand four hundred forty-four dollars a week playing Uno games. What? Wow. Let's hope no one Uno reverse cards that prize. Ha huh. <laughs> ha. Uh, toy company Mattel announced it is seeking a chief Uno player to get paid four 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 a week for four weeks to play the last or the latest version of the game Uno Cuatro. The company said the chosen candidate will be called upon to dedicate four hours a day for four weeks a week or for four days a week to Uno Cuatro, which combines a popular card game with a four in a row now uh, drop down game. Uh, the winning applicant will be called upon to spend four weeks in New York City. Their duties will include challenging strangers to play the game, teaching new players the rules, and creating Uno-related content for the game's social media channels. Wow. Like, honestly, I actually would probably bite this. This sounds interesting. I'd like to get, play, get paid to play Uno. You gotta live in New York, though. That's the, that's the thing. Well, no, they'll be taken to New York. They'll come, oh, they'll really? send, yeah, right here. The winning applicant will be called upon to set, spend four weeks in New York City. So they'll probably send them there. Like, Just go to, um, what's that park where everyone plays chess? And, like, just throw the Uno cards at the table. Yo, I know you guys like chess, but check this out. Uno Quattro just came out. <laughs> <laughs> like, like come out the... Come at them like John Tron does with the, with the Raid Shadow Legends energy. It's like, you know, yeah. chess, is, chess is boring, dumb. Like, like Uno, Quattro, one up. <laughs> Camera shake. Like, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting there. Uh, what else do we have? Ooh. Bull shark repeatedly attacks fishing boats motor in Florida. Huh. Wow. So let's, uh, let's uh, watch this video here. In lieu of reading, and I'll give you the next article, or you can read this one. But um, 
the video probably like explains it all right here it just it keeps attacking the motor and like I wonder what it would be um go ahead and read sometimes it sometimes animals animals will go after a motor because of the vibrations creating in the water that's why so many manatees get um killed yeah. scars on them yeah yeah well because yeah well like... actually like we spoke about manatees the other day they are no longer on the endangered species list as of 2017 wow look at that yeah but anyway do you want to read this one uh no we can we can go to the next one all right typical florida story mystery object on australian beach most likely from indian space rocket huh oh. This piques my interest. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. The Australian Space Agency said a mysterious cylinder that washed up on a beach earlier this month has been identified as debris from an Indian rocket. The agency said on social media that the object found earlier in July on a beach in Greenhead, Western Australia, is most likely debris from an expended third stage of a polar satellite launch vehicle launched by Indian Space Research Organization. Huh. The debris remain. Yeah, yeah. The debris remains in storage, in, uh, and the Australian Space Agency is working with the ISRO, who provide further information or further confirmation to determine the next steps, including consideration considering obligations under the United Nations space treaties. Wow. So, like, like you know, like th this is like you know, the world is complicated. Like. Something just washed us up on their beach, and now they got to work with the UN and like figure out what are we going to do with it? Are we going to send it back to India? Are we going to scrap it? Like, you know, like it is an Indian product, and they launched it. You know, it did its job, but it's still technically Indian property. But it right. washed up on their beach, you know, Australia, and technically it's Australia's now. Like, like <laughs> this is why I don't the know UN. If there's much you to know, scrap there. You'd have to like clear off all the black mold and barnacles. Yeah. That. yeah, which makes me wonder, like, how yeah. long was it in the ocean for? Because how long before barnacles really start getting, you know, on things and whatnot? Like, a yeah, week? it takes it takes a while. They're pretty uh, slow moving creatures. Hmm. What else do we got here? More from Oopy. Most push ups in one hour, world record broken for the second time in a month. Wow. Wow. <laughs> A Romanian athlete who has been attempting to break the world record for most push-ups in one hour for six years finally broke the record successfully after one month after it was last set. Oh, what an awesome, what an awesome story right there. Of course, he's Romanian. He's <laughs> watching, uh, he's watching the top G content. He's, <laughs> he's in the real world. Yeah. Guinness World Records announced Pop Laurentu at the age of 35, who is from Romania and currently lives in London, broke the record by performing 3,378 push-ups in one hour. Wow. Uh, Lorento broke the record of 3,249 set by Australian Daniel Scali, who was awarded the GWR title just one month before it was taken by Lorentigo. And yeah, like, I believe we actually did report on this, like, a about a month or, you know, a couple weeks ago, about that very same guy. Because, like, I saw this, I'm like, this is rather familiar. So, yeah, less than a month ago, we talked about uh, the previous record, so interesting. Now, here's something, uh... <laughs> You get to take this. This is hilarious. Chinese zoo denies its sun bear is a human in a costume. Now, this is yet another... We can just watch the video. That is not a bear. You can see the folds of the fabric. That is a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the ass right there. Like... Oh, wait a minute. That he face looks totally fake, too. He it walked away pretty convincingly. Though. No, I... The that... face hardly moves. The face is moving and so is the neck. Huh. Hard well, to say there. Not I don't know what to say. Because standing up, it looks so human. Let's let's bigger this and watch this again. I'm going to replay. I don't want my audio. This is tough, because that looks like such an obvious costume, but that head is hyper-realistic. Like, it doesn't look like it's moving, but it is. They zoom in a little bit. Yeah, here we go. This is when they zoom in, and you see the mouth and the throat are moving. Oh, yeah, just barely. Yeah, but that is not a mask. Unless this is, like, unless... 
unless they blew the entire budget on some like super awesome Hollywood special effects mask and then just got him like a black tracksuit yeah. or it something. Doesn't like but... could... It doesn't look like he could um, easily get in or get out of it either. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> as well I said before, up. when it's standing, it looks human, but when he gets on all fours and walks away, he rounds out and he looks much more like a bear. See, like, you know, he gets it, he rounds out almost as if it's transforming from a human to a bear. See, that's, that's weird. Wow. Like, they really are making animal human hybrids in labs. Maybe. This is China. You know, maybe. Like, that's kind of Could scary. Be. Pretty scary, yeah. Yeah. What else, else do we got here? This? Yeah, let's move on. Stork has wings full with four babies. Oh, the stork got a visit by another stork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not one, not two, but six of these beautiful and extremely rare storks were seen having a family reunion in the Kruger National Park in South Africa. Gary Smith from Kruger Gateway Safaris experienced his absolutely marvelous sighting and shared it with LatestSightings.com. It was another day in the Kruger, and my guests and I were hoping to spot some of Africa's majestic creatures like buffalo, elephants, or the big cats. However, nature had an extraordinary surprise in store for us. As we stopped on a bridge, my attention was drawn to the beautiful or to the colorful bird on my side. A saddle-billed stork surrounded four other birds. My initial instinct led me to believe they were marabou storks, but I was pleasantly surprised when I realized that they were, in fact, four sub-adult saddle-billed storks. A sight so rare that I had never dreamt of such before. An encounter like this, considering the challenges saddle-billed storks face during their development, is remarkable. Generally, between one and three eggs are laid during breeding, making it highly improbable that four chicks are able to survive into sub-adulthood. This remarkable family has defied the odds, thriving in the heat or heart of the Kruger National Park. Dang. Look at that. That's cool. It is pretty cool. Yeah. And last but not least, we got from NPR. Hold on a second. Need a oh, sneeze. boy. Pardon me. Um, celebrate Christmas in July with research on The Sims 4, sleep and free snacks. What? Excuse me. Um, would you survive as a doctor in The Sims 4? What's the appropriate amount of free food to take from a public uh, sample si station before it's considered greedy? And how much of an impact do clock towers have on sleep? These are hard-hitting questions that researchers ask and answer in the Christmas issue of the BMJ, formerly known as the British Medical Jour Journal. It was started in 1982... As the experimental roundup of fun research for the holidays, <clears throat> pardon me, has since grown into the uh, into one of the BMJ's most highly anticipated issues each year. Now, getting published in the BMJ's Christmas issue is a feather in the cap for scientists and non-scientists alike. But it's not easy. So, like, what what is the? Let's see here. Uh, they receive over 100 submissions, research and non-research alike, each year, and only takes a handful. July 31st is the deadline for research submission. August 31st is the deadline for non-research submissions, such as essays and features. A team of dedicated editors, including Jenny Ranstanathan and Timothy Benedy, act as gatekeepers for the many submissions, which are peer-reviewed and decided upon over the course of several meetings. Okay, but what's the purpose of this? Um, okay, well, it's not really telling me. That's weird. All right, well, anyway, um, yeah, if, uh, for further reading on this, please, you know, once again, refer to the underbar, but that will conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may be interested in, including but unlimited to all things Omni Coalition. Please check out our link tree. For your dose of different, odd, and unusual things, we stream every Tuesday and Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, which is uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Mountain, 5 Central, and 6 Eastern Standard Time, respectively. For all of you and all of us, I am Ian Zander. And I'm MTM. And you are you. And until you catch us next Friday, or if you're interested in some history, we have a history show every day at 11 in the morning Pacific time. Uh, until you see us next time, until then, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! <laughs>